Now, the another topic for us is acne vulgaris. After going to uh, the vitiligo, let's talk about another very, very important topic in dermatology that is acne vulgaris. Now, see, okay, look at the meaning here. Acne is a very common chronic skin disease involving the blockage of and or chronic inflammation of pilosebiosis in it. So this is a disorder of pilosebiosis in it, hair follicle along with sebiasis gland. And there occurs chronic inflammation and the blockage of those sebiasis gland. There is a important pathophysiology, which is there, okay? We are going to talk about everything in this class. Acne vulgaris is typically affects the areas of the skin with the densest population of sebiasis follicle. And those areas are face, upper part of the chest, and the back, upper back, okay? Upper back uh, is the main one. So face, upper part of the chest, and upper back. In, in some of the cases of very severe, you know, affection, the whole face may be affected. Along with that, upper part of the chest and upper part of the back is, is also having a lot of acne lesions. It has varied presentation and it is characterized by comedone, which are known as black head or white head. It may have papules, which we call pinhead. It may have pustules, which we commonly call pimples. It has got nodules. Nodules are the larger type of papule and in very severe case, probably scarring as well. Okay, so these are the different terms in case of acne. See there. It may have comedone. Now, long time ago, we talked about the meaning of black head and white head. Anybody remember what is the difference between black head and white head? Yes. So, black head is partially open and covered by melanin. That's why black and white is completely cloned and contained. Very good. Excellent answer he has given. Very good, Ranayatisham. So, black head means it is partially opened. It is not completely closed. And some of the discharge can come out and it is covered by melanin. That's why it looks, uh, you know, a bit black. White head is a closed one, okay, is a closed one. And these are very important presentation in case of acne, okay. Many of the, you know, patient, uh, especially girls, when they go to the, you know, facial and those types of things, these comedones are scooped out, you know, they are scooped out by taking a long time there. So it is a quite a common type of presentation in case of acne. And in some other people, there is frank post formation, which are called postular pimple. And sometimes they are just the papule, small nodular type of things. And in, in some of the serious cases, because of the very severe type of affection, even scar may have formed. Now, what is this pilosebiasis unit? Have a look at this picture. So this is the hair follicle. You can clearly see here. This is called, you know, root of the hair follicle. Okay. And here is the sebaceous gland, which is opened. This is sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland secretion comes out from the same opening as the hair follicle or the hair. And in this condition, this opening is blocked. So after this opening is blocked, the sebaceous gland will be distended because the secretion cannot go out. On top of that, there is infection development now because of one of the particular bacteria, which is known as Propionibacterium acne. And combination of all these things together will lead to extensive infection and inflammation of this whole area. And this is known as acne. So it doesn't have uh, anything to do with sweat gland though, okay? It is purely a disease of pilosebiasis in it. Now look at this picture, which will tell you a lot of things here. First of all, this opening is blocked, okay? Block of the uh, opening here. Second one, there is deposition of a lot of sebum and this sebum is infected. It is infected, okay? And it is distended quite largely. The hair also can be broken. So these all are different types of features of acne. 
acne occurs most commonly during adolescence when the gonad begin to produce and release more androgen hormone and it often continues into adulthood so androgen hormone has a clear role to play for the development of acne and adolescence means they are in the pubertal age group when puberty starts acne also start because it has relation with androgen and it doesn't stop there you know the secretion of androgen will continue after that isn't it so acne will also continue into adulthood till till the age of 20 25 or all, sometimes even 30 during adolescence acne vulgaris is more common in male than in female and in adulthood acne vulgaris is more common in women than in men now this is a important point to understand in adulthood okay for example after the age of 30 or 35 if some female develops acne it strongly tells us probably she is having some ovarian tumor or some dysfunction of the ovary where there is excessive androgen release from there so can you tell me which are those ovarian tumor or which are those ovarian condition where androgen is secreted yes in female polycystic ovarian disease excellent that is one polycystic ovarian disease or syndrome and any tumor you remember which is uh, you know associated with androgen release any tumor this is known as okay sartoli lydic cell tumor sartoli cell and lydic cell tumor which may occur uh, in the ovary and remember lydic cell they release testosterone or androgen so that is one of the example and more common than that is polycystic ovarian disease is absolutely correct so we think about that if if uh, you know a lady after the age of 30 or 35 develops acne for most people acne diminishes over time see here and this is a very important point it is a uh, quite common uh, during the adolescent or uh, pubertal age but after that you know the effect of the acne slowly diminishes it may not completely disappear but later on it may uh, you know disappear as well by age 25 and some individual will carry this condition well into their 30s 40s or, or even beyond but that is a bit rare okay by the age of 25 to 30 Uh, most of them will not develop acne anymore there is a strong family history multiple members of the same family may develop acne vulgaris and if adult onset acne is there we need to do detailed investigation we need to find out why acne has come in the adult probably there is some androgen exposure in them maybe androgen secreting tumor or maybe somebody is taking androgen from outside now with this information let's talk about what are the causes of acne first of them are the hormonal causes look at the different types of hormone androgen okay androgen hormone and anabolic steroid now, androgens are the male hormone okay testosterone is a type of androgen androgen hormone is also produced in female and what are the sources of androgen hormone in female yes what are the sources from where they come adrenal gland adrenal gland one is adrenal gland and another is ovary itself don't forget ovary also ovary also produces uh, yeah a small amount of androgen exactly ovary produces androgen in the beginning actually if you go into the detail the theca cells of the ovary produces androgen in the beginning that androgen will be aromatized into estrogen by the granulosa cell okay so so we can clearly say ovary can also produce androgen but the amount is very less okay, in case of female whereas uh, you know adrenal gland a uh, one layer of the adrenal cortex is responsible for the production of adrenal androgen as well congenital adrenal hyperplasia and polycystic ovarian syndrome are important causes of you know uh, 
uh, exposure to androgen. See this congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Everyone uh, of you know that uh, in this condition, there is no synthesis of glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid because of a lack of one important enzyme that is known as 21 hydroxylase. This 21 hydroxylase enzyme is lacking there, you know, it is absent. Now, as a result of this, glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid called aldosterone cannot be formed. So the pathway is diverted towards the androgen pathway. So for many, most of the androgens are formed there. So this is a hyperandrogenic state, CAH. Of polycystic ovarian syndrome, there are multiple cysts developed in the ovary, okay, and there is increased androgen production. During pregnancy and menstruation also, acne can appear because of slightly more amount of androgen hormone. Now, let's move on. Another important cause is genetic. Now, there are multiple genes which are responsible, but uh, you know, uh, it is uh, difficult to find out which are they. It is common in first degree relatives. So it clearly tells us there is a role of gene, okay? So still research is going on there. Psychological causes. Increased acne severity is related with the increased stress. And this is a very, very important point. Now, so many of you are already having acne. Just think about, uh, you, know, you know, one mechanism here. Yeah? Just before your uh, examination, and before examination, you know, this is a stressful situation uh, for any student. Any student, trust me, they are nervous before the exam, even if it is a minor exam. Okay. So we, we often study a little bit more. We often ignore our diet. You know, we take a lot of stress. And if somebody is having acne, it just flare up during that time. It just become more, you know, they may develop a little bit, bit of more nodular state, maybe a bit more pimples, or something like that. So psychological uh, condition have a role to play. Another one is infection. Propionibacterium acne and Staphylococcus epidermidis are the two common bacteria which will lead to infection of pyloceviasis unit and you know, exacerbate the situation. Diet has a role to play. High glycemic load diet is associated with worsening of the acne and milk consumption is associated with severity of acne. High glycemic load means quickly absorbing sugar. For example, Coke, okay, Coca-Cola is one of the good example I want to give here. Sweets, okay, sweets, chocolates, candies, these all have high glycemic load. So they lead to worsening of the acne and even milk consumption is associated with severity. Now, all of those points are highlighted once again by this, uh, you know, beautiful diagram or picture you can say, this is known as acne tree. Now see here. There is a very important role of genetics. Okay, important role of gene. This is the hereditary. It may run in the family. If somebody is already having predisposition to those particular gene, on top of that, if they are producing high level of androgen, which is very common at the pubertal age, they can simply develop acne. Everyone is not developing. We all know that. Everyone who reaches the pubertal age are, are not developing acne. This is not my point. There has to be some genetic predisposition first. There has to be more level of androgen than other, and then only it can be developed. The process is helped by dead skin cell. Remember the superficial most layer of the epidermis. What is the name of that layer? The superficial most layer of the epidermis? Yes, which layer? Corneum. Stratum corneum. Medium. Medium. Exactly, stratum corneum. Stratum corneum is made by dead skin cell. And those dead skin cells are rapidly you know, lost from there they form the flex okay or the scale if some individual is you know having high turnover of this flex or scale then they can 
you know, clearly block the opening of those pyloceviasis unit and the process may start like that. Roll of bacteria, propionibacterium acne, and all of these will lead to inflammation, okay, of the pyloceviasis unit. A stressful situation may play a role, isn't it? It may play a role, already talked about. Uh, we should ask a good history about that. And probably immune system is also exacerbating. If somebody is immunocompromised, something like that, uh, you know, it is more commonly seen in them. Let's move on. Now, understanding of pathogenesis is very easy. See here, all of you, please focus. If you understand this, the clinical features are so easy for you. This is a pre-pubertal sebaceous gland before the onset of puberty, okay? The size of the sebaceous gland is like this. It is producing sebum, okay? And the sebum is nicely coming outside and moisturizing the skin surface. That is what sebum is all about. It is a moisturizing type of chemical and we need it, you know, otherwise our skin would be very dry. Under the effect of androgen, see here, there is hypertrophy of the sebaceous gland. It will become bigger in size and it starts to produce more sebum. Still, the, the opening is not blocked. So whatever sebum is there, it can still come out, okay? All these are effect of the androgen. Now the problem starts when this opening is blocked and that can happen because of excessive flaking or scaling, okay? Uh, by the dead skin cells, which are present on the surface of the skin. Now it is blocked. And then everything is uh, happening inside. See there, it is distended. It cannot discharge outside. The sebum will, will be lying there for a longer time, okay, or collected there for a longer time. Some chemical reaction will start to happen. Bacterial infection will, will start now. Okay, so if it is partially open and some of the chemical substance go out, it leads to black comedone formation. If nothing is going out, it is called as white comedone. If it is infected, now if it, it carries pus inside, it is known as pustule. So many different terms we can use here now. And ultimately, it can rupture because nothing is going out. Remember how, how, uh, you know, long it can distend, isn't it? There has to be a, a time period. So after that, it will rupture. Rupture of this, uh, you know, sebaceous gland will lead to, uh, you know, some infection will go in the nearby area, just like this. So larger area will be infected and inflamed, and there is a high chance of scar formation now. So don't be surprised if there is a scar formation on the affected area in case of severe acne vulgaris. Now, let's uh, uh, talk about this pathogenesis, you know, in this slide. Every student will understand it very easily now. Acne vulgaris has a multifactorial pathogenesis of which the key factor is genetics. It is not developed by everyone, remember that. It, it is developed in those people who are genetically predisposed only. So acne develops as a result of an interplay of the following four factors together. And those four factors are follicular epidermal hyperproliferation with subsequent plugging of the follicle. This, this has to start the whole process. Without blocking of the duct, acne cannot occur. Second, excessive sebum production under the effect of androgen. Third, presents an activity of the commensal bacteria known as propionibacterium acne, which should go there and infect, but that can only happen after the blockage of the duct and when there is increased sebum production. And the last one, because of this, the inflammatory mediator will come into play and it can result in inflammation. So these four factors will occur together or one after other, you know, we should say, uh, first one after other, then later on, they, they, they occur together as well and leads to acne. Let's move on. 
Now, some of the picture again, see here, is the normal skin, and this is a cross section of the normal skin. Here is hair. This is known as hair follicle. Here is a sebaceous gland, isn't it? And here's the sweat gland. This is the dermis, and here is the epidermis. This is the basal layer, and this whole area is called epidermis. We all know that. The top layer of the skin is scaly and gradually flex up. This is known as stratum corneum. And so many other layers are there. This is the normal structure. Now, what will happen on the skin with acne? First of all, this opening is blocked. This opening is blocked. Now, what is happening inside? The hair may break. There is distension of the sebaceous gland. There may be infection because of that bacteria known as propionibacterium acne. There may be collection of pus. It may rupture. It may lead to inflammation in the nearby area. So everything uh, develops after that. Now, with this, uh, you know, pathophysiological mechanism, let's talk about the clinical feature, how the patient presents. Local symptoms of acne vulgaris may include pain, tenderness, and or erythema. So pain, tenderness, and or erythema. These are important local features. Uh, if there is a, a in, increased distension, if there is infection, if there is pimple formation, there is pain in that area. And when we press there, it will be tender as well. Okay, And it may look red because of the inflammation. The systemic symptoms are most often absent in case of acne vulgaris because it's a localized disease. But there are certain exceptions, okay? We'll talk about that. But usually, in case of acne vulgaris, or the most common type of acne, systemic symptoms like fever, myalgia, arthralgia, all of those are absent. Severe acne with associated systemic sign and symptoms, such as fever, is referred to as acne fulminance. Fulminance means severe type. The name itself tells you. Acne fulminance is a rare type of acne vulgaris where there is severe involvement of the area along with some systemic symptom and sign. Severe acne characterized by multiple connecting comedone and abscess without the presence of systemic symptom is known as acne conglobeta. Now, there is no fever, but it is a severe type of acne and there are multiple connecting comedone and abscess. Okay. Remember, the most common site is face, upper part of the back and upper part of the chest. In those areas, acne conglobeta may occur. These severe forms of acne frequently heal with disfiguring scar. Scar formation is quite common after the heal in this severe type of acne, both in acne fulminance and acne conglobeta. You know, uh, scar formation is quite common. Additionally, acne vulgaris may have a psychological impact on any patient, regardless of the severity or grade of the disease. Now think about that young person, okay, who has just entered into the adolescent age or the pubertal age. The person may be going to school, okay, or if it occurs in a bit late, probably at the 16 to 18 year, going to college as well. And the face is having pimples most of the time. The face may be having disfiguring scar, a different types of comedone, different types of nodules. The person has that feeling that I am not that attractive in comparison to my friends. Okay, especially girls will have that feeling. Boys can also have, I'm not saying that, okay. So all of the patients can have that type of feeling. So the there is low self-confidence. We call it low self-esteem because of this. So acne vulgaris uh, have a, some of the psychological impact on the patient. So the doctor who is treating this type of cases has to address the situation. Okay, they should explain, don't worry, there are some excellent drug which are, you know, treating you. And uh, it may take time, but after a certain time, you know, you will be free of the problem.
Now, what are the findings? During the examination, what will you see? Acne vulgaris is characterized by comedone, papules, postules, and nodules in a sebaceous distribution that is on the face, upper chest, and back. This is the most important presentation here. Comedone, black and white comedone, papules, very small type of nodules, less than five millimeter in size, they are called papule. Postule, okay, the post filled vesicles and nodule are the larger type of papule. A comedone is a white, white head, also known as closed comedone, or a black head, which is partially open comedone without any clinical signs of inflammation. Quite common clinical feature. Papules and postules are raised bump with obvious inflammation, and postule means post filled vesicle. The face may be the only involved skin surface, but the chest, back, and upper arms are often involved. See here, okay. Dermatology uh, is a morphological diagnosis. So many times I've told you. So please focus on the description and the picture. It clearly tells you the finding there. Look at this face. This is known as comedonal acne. Okay, comedonal acne. These are called comedones. I cannot see any component of inflammation there. In comedonal acne, patients develop open and closed comedone but may not develop inflammatory papules or nodules, exactly like this. And so many of the people develop this, you know, these are purely because of the partially uh, closed, okay, uh, duct or sometimes, sometimes completely closed one. So we can scoop it out, okay? And sometimes if they are big, there is a clear cut indentation of the gap also present there after we, we remove them. Another is a mild type of acne. Now see there, mild acne is characterized by comedone and a few papulopostules. Comedone are clearly visible here, and then combination of papule and postules together. This is a mild type of acne. Now moderate acne has comedone. It has got comedone, inflammatory papules, and postules together. Now see this, it is clearly more severe than the previous one, isn't it? Clearly. Look at here, these are the postules. I can clearly see the post point there, okay? Others are papules, which are not having post point, but they, they are definitely elevated from the uh, surface. And there are comedone as well. Now, greater numbers of lesions are present than in milder inflammatory acne in this case. Now, another is a nodulocystic acne. Look at this, this point here. This looks very severe one. And here, a multiple lesions are fused with each other. Okay, I can clearly see this one big lesion here. Okay, and if this uh, heals, it definitely leads to scar formation. Is high chance of scar formation here. So nodulocystic acne is characterized by comedone, inflammatory lesion, and large nodules greater than five millimeter in diameter. And this is one of the severe type of acne. Some other pictures. This is a very closed view uh, of the you know lesion. See here, they are clearly erythematous or looks inflamed, and some of the post point can be seen. And this extensive involvement, forehead, side of the temple, cheeks, okay, uh, even the beard area are, are affected there. Now, look at here, the different pictures have, have been collected from the internet site. This is a mild type of acne, only few lesions are there. Most of them are comedone, mild to moderate, along with comedone, some papules and postules are seen. Okay, and slowly from the mild to moderate, we are going to the severe variety. And this is very severe one. Look at here. There's a big, this, this definitely will develop to scar later on. Okay, severe type of acne. 
in this in this uh, you know a patient also uh, there is high chance of scar formation because of these different lesions now let's move further let's talk about the different variants of the acne the classical acne vulgaris is the most common one that's what we are talking till now another is called neonatal acne now acne develops in the neonate now what is the reason probably why neonate develops acne yes why this is the effect on genital adrenal hyperplasia congenital adrenal this is the probably this is the effect of hormone which are uh, coming from the mother okay because this hormone can cross the uh, the placenta and then they can present in the baby and they they can have certain life there you know so after the baby is born for certain weeks uh, the acne like lesions may occur on the baby's face but uh, you know we don't need to worry much about that but diagnosis is important here that is called neonatal acne uh, uh, acne because of congenital adrenal hyperplasia takes time you know takes time to appear but you are right we can easily tell that as one of the cause but it it appears later drug induced acetates sorry drug induced acne which is caused by acetates danazol cortisol or testosterone all of these stimulate the sebaceous gland so these are drug induced causes they can induce sebaceous gland you know directly or because of the production of androgen okay this is the mechanism danazol is a androgen uh, you know like drug hormonal acne which is seen in cushing syndrome and pcod now cushing syndrome there is higher level of androgen and polycystic ovarian disease definitely higher amount of androgen this is hyperandrogenic state acne fulminans is another type where there is systemic symptoms along with severe acne fever is quite common in fulminans another i can write here is acne conglobeta now there is a difference between fulminans and conglobeta conglobeta there is no fever in fulminans there is fever along with severe acne so these are the different variant now i will look here here is a neonate which having you know acne like lesions so this okay so we don't need to worry much uh, after certain time uh, this acne will disappear because that hormone which is present in the body of the baby uh, it has got certain life for few weeks maybe after that uh, it will not come back again what are the complications of acne vulgaris one of the most important complication is scar formation okay scar formation that scar can be atrophic type of scar or can be keloidal type of scar now atrophic scar is definitely more common than keloidal type and this scar uh, you know uh, is a having some cosmetic cosmetically importance there isn't it the person the overall appearance the cosmetic appearance doesn't look good because of the scar there now what is keloid yes hypertrophic scar hypertrophic yes normal hypertrophic growth okay now see here for example okay this is the skin and there is a you know wound there for example wound like acne okay there is acne lesion this acne lesion has healed and after that there is a scar formation now if this scar is you know just present like this okay this is one of the you know type of scar and another one now let me draw it here sometimes the scar may go like this now which one of these is called keloid which one bigger one second one second one which is beyond the uh, boundaries margins exactly 
absolutely correct, which goes beyond the boundary or the margin. See, it is clearly going beyond the margin or the boundary of the wound. So this second one is called keloid. Okay, this is keloid. The first is called hypertrophic scar. There is a difference. This is hypertrophic scar and here's the keloid one. I'm sure every student knows this already from the surgery, because these are the important things which you have studied long time ago. And atrophic scar means, you know, it is going, you know, a bit depressed, going towards the inside. This is known as atrophic type of scar, okay? So these are the different variety. Now see that another important complication in case of acne is psychological impact. There is a reduced self-esteem or self-confidence because of this. So we need to, you know, a bit of a counsel those type of youngsters because that is a already a very vulnerable period. Their mind is, you know, difficult to control during that time. You know, they can easily deviate towards the wrong path. And at the same time, they may compare themselves to other people. So a good amount of counseling is necessary for them. We have to explain why this acne is developed, what is the reason behind it, and what should they do to decrease the effect of this? And what is the effect of the treatment also? Some complication may occur because of the associated disease like androgen producing tumor and PCOD or polycystic ovarian disease. In polycystic ovarian disease, there is hirsutism. You all know that. Hirsutism is very common. Okay. It may be a situation where there is insulin resistance as well. Insulin resistance. And because of that, even type 2 diabetes may develop. The person is obese or obesity is there. The person is infertile. It is important cause of infertility, okay? Apart from that, androgen producing tumor, usually they are produced by the ovarian tumor, like, a, you know, like a Sertoli cell, lydic cell tumor. That's a wonderful example. Here. The Sertoli cell, lydic cell tumor is called androgen producing tumor. So these are the different condition which we have to think uh, in case of complication. Now, this is a, a you know, clinical diagnosis. So we can go for certain investigation. One of them is Wood's lamp examination, just like that, okay? It has been discussed before also. And another is hormonal assay. We can uh, go for Now, Now, at last, let's talk about the treatment of acne vulgaris. What type of treatment we are going to provide? The current consensus recommend a combination of topical retinoid and antimicrobial therapy as the first line therapy for all patient with acne. So this is how we start the treatment. Topical retinoid with topical antimicrobial therapy. Okay, so we are talk, we'll talk about uh, what are those antibiotics and what are those topical retinoid. Shia. Retinoids, these are comedolytic and anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, comedolytic means they destroy the comedone as well as they are anti-inflammatory. So both of them are very useful mechanism for the treatment of acne. They normalize follicular hyperproliferation and hyperkeratinization as well, so that there is decreased chance of blockage of those opening. Topical retinoid reduce the number of microcomedone, comedone, as well as inflammatory lesion. This is a very good effect. Topical retinoids should be initiated as a first-line therapy for both comedonal and inflammatory acne and continued as maintenance therapy to inhibit the further microcomedone formation. So there is a, a, a lot of advantage of topical retinoid. The most commonly prescribed topical retinoids are you need to remember this name, adapalin, tazarotene, and tridinoin. 
adapalin, cazorotin, and tretinoin. These are the pharmacological name of the topical retinoids. These retinoids should be applied once daily to clean and dry skin, but they may need to be applied less frequently if irritation occurs. So one of the side effects of this is irritation of the skin or burning sensation of the skin. Topical retinoid thin the stratum corneum and they have been associated with photosensitivity or sun sensitivity means burning type of sensation when the person goes out to the sunshine. So this is the only problem of these topical retinoids. Apart from them, they are wonderful drug for the treatment of acne bulgaris. Let's move on. Now, another type of topical treatments are topical antibiotics, okay? We use both systemic as well as topical antibiotic. Right now we are talking about the topical one. They are mainly used for their role against propionibacterium acne. This is a bacteria which is associated with acne. They may also have anti-inflammatory properties. The topical antibiotics are not comedolytic and bacterial resistance may develop to any of these agents over a period of time. But we have certain other, you know, agent which will decrease the emergence of bacterial resistance, okay? And that is known as benzyl benzoate. We'll talk about that. Now, commonly prescribed topical antibiotics for acne vulgaris include clindamycin or erythromycin. Clindamycin or erythromycin. These are commonly used drug. Clindamycin is a uh, very commonly used in this purpose. Antimicrobials, okay. Antimicrobials should be combined with a topical retinoid for greater clearing of the lesion and for the shortening of the treatment duration and with benzyl peroxide, sorry, ben, not benzyl benzoate. Benzyl benzoate is a, you know, drug for the escapist treatment. This is benzoyl peroxide here, okay. To reduce the likelihood of resistance. Now, let me clarify this again. If these topical uh, antimicrobials are combined with benzoyl peroxide and the tazarotene or adapalene like a topical retinoid, then the effectiveness is also much better and emergence of resistance against this antimicrobial is also less. So usually benzoyl peroxide is also added uh, along with them. Let's move on. Now, the third one is a benzoyl peroxide. Just now we talked about this benzoyl peroxide will decrease the resistance of uh, this uh, antibiotic against, uh, you know, uh, propionibacterium acne. Benzoyl peroxide products are available over the counter. You don't need any prescription to buy them, okay? And they're available in a different types of form. Benzoyl peroxide products may be used once or twice a day. So remember the name here. Yeah anti-acne medicine, benzoyl peroxide. Now let's uh, talk about what are the systemic uh, drugs, okay? What are the systemic drugs or systemic therapy? One is systemic antibiotics. They are a mainstay in the treatment of moderate to severe inflammatory acne vulgaris. If there is postules, if there is a lot of nodules, okay, or nodulocystic type of acne, then we have to go for systemic antibiotics. And the most commonly used systemic antibiotics are doxycycline and minocycline. And we have to give them for a longer duration, okay, few months. Concurrent treatment with topical benzoyl peroxide may reduce the emergence of resistance strain. So this is a, a continuously used. Along with that, systemic antibiotics are, are, are added, okay, to the patient. Now, oral antibiotic use can lead to vaginal candidiasis. Why? What is the mechanism? Anybody? Why they Normal need to... Normal flora will die. Exactly. Very nice. So, this can kill the normal flora. So, there is a clear-cut imbalance, you know, develop at that site. So, so there is overgrowth of the candida which can lead to vaginal candidiasis. 
not only vaginal candidiasis, candidiasis can occur in other parts of the body also, right? In the oral cavity also. Doxycycline can be associated with photosensitivity, one of the side effects. And minocycline has been linked to pigment deposition of the skin, mucous membrane, and even the teeth. But these are not very, you know, concerning type of uh, side effect. Okay, these are good drug in the treatment of severe type of acne. So we still go for them. Now, what about the other types of systemic treatment? They are known as hormonal therapy. Okay, hormonal therapy. Now remember the, uh, the effect of androgen here. We have to give certain drug which antagonize the androgen effect. And one of that drug is estrogen. It can be used to decrease sebum production. Additionally, it reduces ovarian production of the androgen by suppressing gonadotropin release. So this is, this is an anti-androgen role. Oral contraceptive pill also increase the hepatic synthesis of sex hormone binding globulin, resulting in an overall decrease in circulating free testosterone. Means testosterone will bind with this carrier protein, so the amount of free testosterone will be low. Okay, this testosterone is androgen, so it helps the patient in this regard. Combination birth control pill have shown efficacy in the treatment of acne. It has got estrogen and progesterone. Combination pill means both. Spironolactone is one of the drug which is used in the treatment of acne vulgaris. And you all know, spironolactone binds to the androgen receptor and reduces the androgen production. Now, what type of drug is spironolactone? What type of drug? Potassium sparing Excellent. This is potassium sparing type of diuretic, also known as anti-aldosterone drug. It, it antagonizes aldosterone for its effect. Wonderful. Now, another very important type of drug for the treatment of acne is called isotretinoin. Okay, it is a powerful drug, isotretinoin. This is a vitamin A derivative, which is uh, taken as a systemic form. So it's a systemic retinoid that is highly effective in the treatment of severe acne vulgaris. Isotretinoin causes the normalization of the epidermal differentiation, depresses sebum excretion by almost 70%. It is anti-inflammatory, and it even reduces the presence of propionibacterium acne. Now see this, it is acting in all the pathophysiological step of acne. So this is a wonderful drug. Some patients only require one course of oral isotretinoin for complete acne remission, while others require more conventional approach, means you know, uh, more doses, or it may be added with some other drugs also. One important you know, uh, point you need to note here is isotretinoin, because it is a vitamin A derivative, is a teratogen, as a teratogenic drug. So pregnancy must be avoided when somebody is taking this drug or pregnancy should be ruled out before you start this drug. In any, any girls or women, you know, if you are giving this drug, then a urine pregnancy test has to be done just to make sure that she is not pregnant. Only taking history is not enough. Contraception counseling is mandatory and two negative pregnancy test results are required prior to the initiation of therapy in women of childbearing potential. Uh, uh, if, uh, if I prescribe this drug and if the lady is pregnant and if I forgot to do the pregnancy test, you know, this is known as criminal negligence. Criminal negligence. And it is taken very seriously. Now, after going through this uh, table, uh, tell me which is the most important or potent drug for the treatment of acne. Which one? Yes? Oral isotretinoin. Oral isotretinoin. 
oral isotretinoin excellent see this oral isotretinoin look at the effect here decreases abnormal follicular keratinization 2 plus reduces sebum production 3 plus decrease propionibacterium acne 3 plus and reduces inflammation 1 plus so this is a wonderful drug but i don't use this drug in the beginning this is only reserved for severe type of acne i have certain other drugs for the less you know uh, severe type of acne like benzoyl peroxide okay then topical tretinoin topical antibiotics in the moderate to severe i add oral antibiotics now minocycline or doxycycline and then oral isotretinoin or hormones are only used in the severe type of forms now apart from them what are the adjunctive therapy what are the extra type of treatment we have uh, apart from those medicines see there they are comedo expression very commonly practiced these days but this comedo can be squeezed out or scooped out cyst drainage this is another way okay cyst may have uh, infectious material inside so we can drain it phototherapy it is given daily for four to six months and it kills the bacteria the commensal bacteria which are present there laser therapy it can target the sebaceous gland and it decreases the sebum production which may help in these type of cases and once the patient develop bad looking or disfiguring scar then you have to go for some plastic surgery like derma abrasion and surgical revision of the scar and this type of therapies are therapies are also available these days you know they are costly or expensive but nevertheless they are available so at the end let me summarize this important topic for you acne vulgaris is very commonly seen in adolescent or pubertal age group number one it has a strong you know link with genetic predisposition all of the adolescent or pubertal you know boys or girls they don't develop acne so there is important family history there okay second point it is strongly connected with androgen exposure more amount of androgen more chance of acne development on top of that stress has a role to play some high glycemic food has a role to play okay some normal commensal bacteria will go there and proliferate propionibacterium acne and staphylococcus epidermidis are the example in the beginning the sebaceous duct has to be closed there has to be more sebum production because of the androgen exposure and that bacteria should uh, infect there combination of all these things okay causes acne vulgaris there are different types of acne or different forms or variants you can say the most common is acne vulgaris that's what we are talking now but sometimes you know acne fulminance may be there acne congulobeta may be there neonatal acne may be there and sometimes acne may be associated with a pcod or polycystic ovarian disease or even you know androgen producing tumor in case of female now this is a clinical diagnosis so you don't need to do any investigation as such but remember if a lady develops acne after the age of 30 to 35 you have to think about androgen producing tumor inside the body or she may be having pcod now regarding the treatment we always start with some basic drug okay it depends on what what the severity of the acne the patient is having is it comedonal or very mild acne i start with topical therapy topical antibiotic and topical retinoids benzoyl peroxide is added there so that uh, the emergence of bacterial resistance will be less if the patient is having moderate to severe type of acne then i'll add certain other drugs like a systemic antibiotic isotretinoin and even hormonal contraceptive pill now we can go for certain adjuvant type of uh, you know therapy here uh, and those adjuvant therapy will help uh, you know the process like comedo expression okay then cyst drainage phototherapy laser therapy or even uh, you know plastic type of surgery if the disfiguring scars are already formed there okay and now with this
uh, the topic of acne vulgaris is 